Hi, I'm Steve with Structural Reinforcement Solutions, and today we're going to look at carbon fiber structural repairs and look at the capabilities and applications of this advanced composite material. So we're going to look at a video here next, and it's going to highlight carbon fiber structural repairs in a parking garage environment. So we're going to look in a commercial space to see the, the capabilities, the applications, and where this advanced strengthening material would fit uh, in an environment such as a parking garage. So let's go into that video now. When it comes to repairing and strengthening concrete structures, carbon fiber reinforced polymer or CFRP is a proven method to strengthen, support, and stabilize concrete infrastructure. Utilizing the strength of the strongest man-made material in the world, SRS's carbon fiber strengthening systems offer a variety of permanent reinforcement solutions for structural components. where traditional solutions can be invasive, have limited effectiveness, and add unnecessary weight to the structure, SRS offers a wide range of high-strength, lightweight, non-invasive carbon fiber strengthening systems designed with distinct advantages over traditional strengthening methods. Carbon fiber can be used to permanently strengthen almost any concrete structural component, increase the load capacity of beams, columns, slabs, and walls, reinforce cracked concrete and prevent water intrusion, encapsulate and restore strength to deteriorated structural components. From increasing the load capacity of beams, columns, slabs, and walls to the reinforcement of cracked concrete and stabilization of CMU walls, these specialized products are easy to use in a variety of strengthening applications and even civil infrastructure projects like bridges. The dedicated team at SRS is there to support you every step of the way with innovative CFRP solutions designed to meet the needs of your reinforcement projects. Contact us today to learn more. So what's at the forefront of any composite strengthening material should be tested and structural reinforcement solutions we take that very seriously we work with one of the biggest composite materials testing laboratories in the world and they put our materials through a series of tests where we're going to understand the behavior of the carbon fiber and the epoxy and how those two components work together so in this particular instance this is a beam break test where we're monitoring the uh different things like the rupture, the bonding, the, the shear of the concrete. So you can see this is a beam broken in two. Pressure is applied to the top of it. And we're going to see exactly at what point in time the material is going to fail. And understanding this data is very important for us when we're putting that information into technical data sheets and we're preparing design uh, engineer drawings for particular uh, strengthening applications. What's important to keep in mind is that each one of these tests are replicated over 20 times. And then we take a reduction value off of those tests to make sure that we have an average that's very reliable. So when we provide a technical data sheet or we put our carbon fiber into a design where it has to carry certain loads, we have very reliable information. And that's all done in accordance with the governing bodies such as ASTM uh, B3039 for all of these particular tests. And this one, we're actually looking at um, understanding a pull test so we can understand the, the fiber properties of the material and exactly at what point they are going to fail because that's and it, it's a very important aspect to understand the, the failure point so that we have this reliable information and the same goes with the epoxy seeing how far that epoxy is going to saturate that carbon fiber fabric and penetrate into the pores of the concrete so this is a pull test so we're understanding exactly how much resistance it's going to take to pull that carbon fiber off of the concrete substrate. And again, all of these tests are replicated multiple times so that we can take a very, very reliable number from, uh, from our, our testing there. And again, this is done in accordance with ICCES, ACI, or AC125. 
Surface preparation is extremely important when it does come to carbon fiber. We want to make sure that we're opening up the pores of the concrete so that it's, the surface is clean and it's prepared properly so that the epoxy is going to be able to penetrate deep into the pores of the concrete. And we're going to get much higher bond strengths when uh, the, the outside cream of the concrete is essentially removed. We're taking about an eighth of an inch of material off. And then uh, this is going to provide a nice clean surface for the carbon fiber to be applied to. And this is a, basically a concrete surface profile three um, as determined by ICRI and uh, their 310-2R, uh, which is sort of the standard for um, concrete surface preparation uh, for carbon fiber installations. When it comes to preparing any kind of cracks that we're going to be dealing with underneath the carbon fiber installation, it's important that those cracks are gonna be addressed. We make a uh, concrete repair paste that sets up rapidly so that those cracks, any kind of voids can be filled. What's important is that we're getting a very smooth, even surface profile beneath the carbon fiber application. The 21, SRS 2100 sets up in about six minutes. So it's very conducive for carbon fiber applications and um, has a high strength and uh, very high compressive values to that particular material. It can also be used for crack injection, uh, setting ports and um, that type of application too, but it's a very versatile uh, crack repair material for that. If we're repairing any kind of uh, cracks that are larger voids, or maybe the plane is not quite even, such as this one here, we would recommend hydraulic cement so that we can have an even transition for the carbon fiber so that it can remain uh, in tension and it's not going to meet any sharp edges when we're repairing that. At SRS, we do provide a lot of engineered design drawings for our clients. In this particular instance, we're wrapping the foundation of a light pole, but uh, this is some of the services that we provide so that we can actually uh, give you a complete design engineer drawing so that you can install the material exactly as per um, our specifications and to a set of engineered drawings. Cutting the material is very straightforward. You're gonna cut it with a pair of uh, heavy duty scissors or shears. You're gonna measure out exactly how much you're gonna need ahead of time so that you have your pieces all set, ready to go. So when you're mixing the epoxy or you're ready to apply the epoxy, all of your carbon fiber is pre-cut ready to install. This is a, uh, an, an important step here when we're talking about a prime coat. Some systems rely on a primer. The SRS system is, um, has a built-in primer in it. So what we're able to do is essentially condition the concrete with a very thin coat uh, ahead of time so that what that's going to do is just condition the concrete so that when you are going to apply your first high build layer, what that's going to do is allow the epoxy to have a much higher bond into the concrete. This high build layer is essentially what we're going to do is work the fabric into this, this uh, layer of epoxy. So it's going to be spread with a roller and you're going to see that sit on the surface and kind of run down the, the concrete there. Once the fabric is applied and embedded into that layer, we're going to work that in with, you know, with either your gloves, hands, or, uh, a roller like this is a slotted aluminum roller. And um, what that's going to do is disp disperse any air bubbles or any excess epoxy that might be built up beneath the surface. But it's a very inexpensive tool that really greatly improves the bond strength and uh, the overall inst installation of the material. Once the fabric has been embedded into that high, the high build layer of epoxy, we've smoothed it out. Now we're going to make sure that we're everything is smooth and apply a final layer of epoxy to, to the finished surface there. So you can see here, this can be spread out, rolled on with a roller and then spread out to make sure that it's smooth. And um, you're, this is going to be essentially your finished coat, your finished surface, which is gonna dry very hard and smooth like you would expect any kind of epoxy finish to, be, uh, to feel and, and to appear. When it comes to Traditional strengthening methods, a lot of carbon fiber applications where we're using carbon fiber are in lieu of where steel would traditionally be used. Now you can see on the left there, a steel plate is used to control a crack um, on a, on a seawall or retaining wall there. In some cases with steel, we would have to make this column larger and heavier in order to strengthen it. In the case of uh, steel beams on a, you know, a basement foundation wall that's bowing, 
this would have to be the, uh, the, the, the solution that would be traditionally would be offered. But each one of these things now would be able to be addressed with carbon fiber. Something to really keep in mind that's very important to understand the difference between unidirectional and bidirectional. Now, it's exactly what it seems. In the unidirectional, all of the material is running in one singular direction. With the bidirectional material, that's split. So you have half of the material running in one direction, half in another. Each one of these little bundles of carbon fiber that you see contains 12,000 filaments of carbon fiber, which is what we refer to as a 12K toe. So in the instance there, if you're looking at the unidirectional, if any instances where we want flexural strengthening, or we want the ultimate amount of tensile strength of the carbon fiber to be running in one particular direction, say for instance, we're strengthening the underside of a beam or a bowed wall, for instance, that's where we would want to utilize the unidirectional material. The bidirectional material where we're dealing with crack confinement or deteriorated or spalled concrete, that's where we would need to capture the material in both ways. So we would use that for confinement and crack repair and a number of other applications that we'll get into. But they do have two very distinct purposes. And this is an important thing to keep in mind when we're designing any kind of carbon fiber application is making sure that the right weave is going to be applied to that particular project. The SRS 660 bi-directional is available in 24 inches and 12 inches. It's a heavyweight 660 gram carbon fiber fabric. It's a twill weave, so it is designed to conform around structures very, very easily. And uh, it comes with either three gallon sets of, of bulk epoxy, two parts A, one part B, or in a cartridge format, which some guys like. Some installers prefer the cartridges if we were going into smaller confined spaces where we wanna be able to just deploy a small amount of carbon fiber. Sometimes that works out uh, a little bit more convenient Whereas the bulk is definitely the application when we're getting into any kind of larger applications where we're gonna be installing um, you know, a lot of the material in, in one particular uh, setting there. Same with the unidirectional, it's available in 12 inches and six inches, the gallon or the bulk. And um, again, that's gonna come down to user preference as well as the particular application that we're gonna be, uh, you're gonna be installing it on. The SRS 1000 resin is, a very high strength structural epoxy resin. It can also be used as a crack injection material as well as a carbon fiber adhesive and saturant. So it's very, very high strength, low viscosity, and uh, it's gonna give you very good working times when you're working with the carbon fiber to make sure it's not gonna set up on you too quickly so that you can get the installation done and not have to worry about the material kicking on you. If you're looking at a cross section of carbon fiber, in this case, it would be bi-directional. We're looking at on a flat plane, but the same could be said if this was on a wall. You can see the role that the two materials play. So you can see the carbon fiber being saturated, bonded with the, with the epoxy. And then the epoxy then is penetrating into the concrete, filling all of the micro fissures and cracks that run off of the main crack. And then the tensile strength of the carbon fiber is pulling against the, the crack there. So we're confining it and we're providing that strength right across the crack in each direction that it wants to pull. So this is how essentially these two components work together as one to form essentially what we would consider a carbon fiber reinforced polymer. So the two components do play um, a very critical role together, working together to form a composite strengthening material. When it comes to general carbon fiber applications, they're gonna fall under these five categories. We're strengthening, we're increasing the load, reinforcing cracked concrete, stabilizing walls, and confining concrete or any kind of deteriorated structural components. So these are sort of the five categories that we're gonna look at. And then we'll look into some very specific examples of each and um, exactly how the, the, the material works in each of those environments. When it comes to bowed walls, we can see that there's a number of reasons why bowed walls fail. In some parts of North America, this is a very common application where we see these walls failing very, very commonly. But to give you an idea of the strength of the SRS 600 Uni, if we applied that to the surface of this cinder block, 
we were looking at a top down there. You can see we're able to get about 36,546 pounds strength uh, out of reinforcing on the face, which gives you higher strengths on the face versus even a number four rebar on the inside of that block. So you can see the difference of surface strengthening versus strengthening um, inside that block itself. So we'll look at how this, partic this particular application works here. And you can see the advantages of about wall stabilization with carbon fiber is that it's contouring to the wall. We're not putting up a flat steel beam against the wall. We're taking an immensely strong material and it's being, it's, it's fully continuously in contact with the wall. We don't have to excavate it and it's going to permanently stop any of that inward movement in this particular instance where we're going to see soil pressures and uh, expansive soil, putting that force and pressure on the wall. This is going to be able to permanently stop any of that inward movement. SRS, we do have engineered designs for this particular application where we have a stamp for each, each state and province where we're able to specify the spacing and the specific design of this particular application. Corner repairs are a very, uh, very common thing when it comes to foundation repair where we're seeing cracked and broken corners. In this particular instance, the crack is running right behind that eaves trough and we're using the unidirectional to wrap right around that corner to provide global strengthening and to, to tie that whole corner back in. One thing to keep in mind is the, any kind of exterior application with carbon fiber really should be coated and we want to make sure that it's the epoxy component of the system is protected from long-term long UV exposure. All of the SRS system, uh, the epoxy does have UV inhibitors in it, but again, as good practice, we want to make sure that it's, uh, it's coated and protected, and it's going to conceal the repair and blend in with the existing concrete finishes of the home a lot better. This particular repair, we have a design detail where we confine the crack with the, bi the 12 inch bi-directional carbon fiber, which provides that crack confinement, it's gonna stop that crack from spreading and it's going to prevent any kind of water intrusion into the building itself. And then the unidirectional is being run horizontally right around that corner and it's gonna be lapped around five feet around each side and that's gonna provide a complete tie-in of that broken corner and uh, provide global strengthening when, uh, when it's cured. We work with a lot of foundation repair and peering companies who are lifting, stabilizing foundations and uh, structures of that nature. So one thing that we want to keep in mind is to understand if there is any settlement that's at play, we want to make sure that that settlement is addressed. So we're going to st stabilize the building, and then we're going to reinforce it and strengthen it with carbon fiber. In this particular instance, if we're dealing with a small isolated crack you know, near one of the pier sites, we can use the 12 or 24 inch bi-directional to confine that area and prevent any kind of water intrusion, soil gases, any of those things from entering the home, entering the foundation. And it's going to provide a complete reinforcement over that crack to stop it from spreading and opening further. So the piers are going to, going to be stabilizing that home and preventing it from sinking. And then we're providing that localized crack confinement with the 12 inch bi-directional. The nice thing is, is the formats that SRS sells their materials in is that you can cut off two foot, four foot, however many feet of material that you need off of the roll kit and use it on one particular project. And then that's, that can get moved to the next job. You can see here in this particular instance, we have the carbon fiber is providing global strengthening of this entire cracked foundation. Each of these vertical areas here where you see the carbon fiber applied, those were cracks in that vertical cracks in that foundation. So the bi-directional is providing that global strengthening and then the unidirectional is tying that entire foundation back together again. So again, the, the foundation repair contractor in this case is going to stabilize it, stabilize it with the piers and then the carbon fiber is gonna provide all of that reinforcement and strengthening to it. After this particular project was done, the contractor parge coated that uh, foundation so that it conceals the carbon fiber and you have a uniform look over the foundation. Whenever we're going around on, on a, any kind of corner, we wanna make sure that we have a radius. So if that's a broken corner tie, for instance, on this retaining wall, we wanna make sure that that's gonna be a half inch radius uh, that you're gonna grind on that corner to make sure that the carbon fiber can 
make a nice smooth transition around the corner without meeting a sharp edge. It's very important. And that can be achieved with the, the surface grinder. When it comes to commercial buildings that need you know, additional flexural strengthening and capacity added to the wall, this is a nice application for carbon fiber where if there's concerns about the flexural capacity or the wall buckling um, when it's being lifted, this is a very nice instance where we can provide that flexural strengthening to the wall and have confidence when the structure is going to be lifted. The picture on the right is not related to that project, but again, if we're peering or lifting the structure and there's cracks and deterioration at those pier sites where the structure is going to be lifted, this is a nice way that we can confine it with bi-directional carbon fiber, instill about 35,000 pounds per square foot of strength. So the next day when you're gonna lift at that site, you can confidently lift the structure and not worry about any kind of um, deterioration at that particular pier site. When it comes to crack repairs, the bidirectional is a great material for that because it not only structurally reinforces the crack, but it also waterproofs it at the same time. With the two components working together, you're getting this composite strengthening system that's going to give you that 35,000 pounds per square foot confinement strength. And again, it's going to waterproof the crack, stop any soil gases from entering the structure. If your crack is changing directions, like the picture in the middle, you can cut the material, overlap at six inches, change it, and then follow, chase the crack essentially in the right direction. If this is an actively leaking crack, or perhaps it's been injected multiple times, what you can do is break open the floor at uh, where the carbon fiber meets the floor there. You can break that small portion of the floor open, run the carbon fiber into the drainage bed, into the drainage gravel beneath the floor. And that way you've got a place for the water to be able to channel and, uh, and reroute. Foundation stem walls are, uh, they crack very frequently. We see this a lot in California and Arizona, areas where we see a lot of stem walls where we're seeing increased seismic activity, either the rebars pour too close to the surface. Um, we're seeing uh, a, lot of, a lot of different activity like this where this horizontal lateral cracking is uh, a very common issue. And at SRS, we have an engineered stamp design for this particular repair which utilizes the 12 inch SRS 660 bi-directional. So we can run that right around the perimeter of the foundation either on the inside or the exterior of the, of the foundation. And this is going to provide an incredible amount of strength and reinstate capacity to that foundation. And this will work if there's no reinforcing steel in the foundation or it's, or it's in question. It can be applied on the inside or the outside, and it's gonna make up for any kind of section loss, and it's gonna greatly improve the load capacity of that foundation. And again, if you're looking at a finished product of this, this is how it would kind of look before it's coated. And this can be done on both sides too. We have some applications where, in areas where there's a concern over seismic activity in the area, this can be used to really greatly improve the seismic capacity and strength of the of the foundation again any kind of voids cracks need to be patched and filled uh, prior to the carbon fiber insulation and um, we're going to use that hardened slotted roller to work that material out and make sure that it's going to lay nice and flat against the wall and we're going to put all of that strength back into the foundation in this particular instance, the contractor used the unidirectional as a tie down to link the house foundation back to the framing itself. And then the bidirectional is used to confine that entire repair. For slabs, uh, cracks and slabs, we can also use this to permanently confine these cracks. It's going to prevent any soil gases from entering, any moisture or water from coming up through that slab through hydrostatic pressure and it's gonna lay dead flat on that finished surface of the, on the, the, the surface of the floor, being that the material is only 16th of an inch thick. At SRS, we do a lot of seawall strengthening, and uh, in this case here, you can see the bidirectional providing that complete crack reinforcement. In this particular instance, the seawall was very badly cracked, and we're able to confine all of those, those areas and those cracks to stop them from spreading and propagating further and it's a complete permanent reinforcement. The 
system is designed to perform underwater, we're going to want to make sure it's coated afterwards in a, our specialized epoxy Kevlar marine coating that we specify for all of the finished applications on seawalls. But seawalls are a great fit for it as the system can perform and is designed to perform underwater, saltwater environment. And it's going to permanently reinstate strength back to these deteriorated seawalls. In this instance here, we see a combination of the unidirectional and the bidirectional used for increased flexural capacity as well as crack confinement. We're tying that broken corner, corner in uh, around the stairs there. And then again, that was coated in uh, epoxy marine Kevlar coating, which is going to protect the system from any kind of debris impacts in the water and um, make sure that the system is completely concealed and, uh, and protected. This is a retaining wall restoration at Occidental College in Los Angeles. And this retaining wall was heavily deteriorated. It had, um, it was about a hundred years old and uh, it had a number of, a lot of, a lot of issues with it. The, it had everything in it from old bed frame mattresses and just about any kind of reinforcing steel that they could get their hands on at the time to repair this wall. As you could see, it had reached a, a very deteriorated state when the contractor needed to address it. So he did an excellent job preparing the wall prior to the carbon fiber installation. And you can see that there was a nice smooth, even profile there before he applied that carbon fiber. And you can see this is a great use of the, the material here to completely strengthen and restore um, all of the capacity back to this wall before it completely failed and um, it would have to be rebuilt completely. And again, the contractor used a stucco coating to conceal that the uh, the material and it blends in very nicely with uh, with the existing walls in that whole neighborhood there on a residential side we do a lot of residential retaining walls or our contractors do they use our materials to strengthen it and in this particular instance you can see that this wall had uh, a number of issues in it there was cracks running throughout this whole section of the poured area at the top at the bottom it was a brick it was a brick retaining wall once this retaining wall failed, there was no way to rebuild it. And it was very important that they could strengthen it in place. So you can see a, this broken corner here, this, re, this was retied in with the unidirectional, which you see running horizontally. And the unidirectional is also running horizontally on the top to provide that global strengthening. And then the bidirectional is being used to confine each of these cracks and to tie that wall back together. Once complete, you can see that the wall was parged and uh, the whole system is, um, is concealed and it looks like a brand new wall when you're finished. The, some of these cracks were also injected with the SRS 1000 resin and the, the cracks there you can see were pasted with the SRS 2100 before they were confined with the 24 inch bi-directional carbon fiber. This was a large commercial retaining wall at a uh, school playground in Portland. And uh, there was concerns of cracking, a number of cracks that had appeared uh, around the, the perimeter of that wall there. So what we put together was a design that was going to utilize the carbon fiber for global strengthening, the bidirectional to confine each of the cracks, these vertical cracks that were appearing. And then we also worked a design in to utilize the, uh, the tiebacks to make sure that the tiebacks are going to provide restraint to that wall. One thing we want to keep in mind when it comes to retaining wall stabilization and reinforcement is that we have restraint on the wall. We don't want that whole, the whole wall to tip as one. So if there is any chance of the wall tipping or that is a concern, wall tiebacks are, are very important. And again, the team at SRS, we can work those into the, the design there for you. This particular instance was a bioretention basin in uh, Mount Juliet, just outside of Nashville, Tennessee there, where there was no reinforcing steel in this wall. The walls were slip formed. There was a parking lot that was poured above it. And then they noticed a number of vertical cracks that were appearing around the perimeter of, that, of the, uh, the retaining wall there. So SRS put a design together to use the unidirectional to tie that whole wall together, essentially like a whaler system right around that entire bioretention basin. And then the unidirectional straps that are being run vertically there are providing additional uh, reinforcement in between each one of these tieback locations. 
If we have to cut through a structural wall opening, in this particular instance, this is at BMI Music Hall in Nashville, where the wall needed to be cut for a doorway opening. And what we proposed and put together was a design to put the unidirectional on both sides of that wall. So you can see it's running up, up the sides of uh, that opening. And then the unidirectional is running over the top as a lintel. So we're essentially picking up and carrying that whole load. So this is a far less invasive solution than if you had to put a lintel or add additional steel and uh, to cut that into the wall. So a nice example here of a structural wall opening where we can use carbon fiber to uh, strengthen that. Same goes for you know a block wall here, for instance, where a large egress window is being put into uh, a block wall. This is a great way to strengthen that entire opening, prevent any cracks from forming off of each of the corners. We do quite a bit of hurricane damage uh, repairs with carbon fiber. This particular project is on the outer banks where there was a lot of strengthening that needed to be applied to this foundation. And uh, they were looking at rebuilding certain sections of it, but Carbon fiber comes into play where we don't have to replace, we can strengthen in place here. And you can see that the unidirectional now is used to provide that full strengthening of this block wall. We were able to tie in the bond beams and uh, a number of different elements to this project where carbon fiber was used to basically tie that entire structure back together again so that it's uh, strong enough to resist the next hurricane and then repair it from the last. These are deteriorated columns also um, in the outer banks there in North Carolina. And you can see that a lot of deterioration has gone on over time. This is at a, a uh, condominium building that was, that was really in need of repair. These balconies were getting quite deteriorated. So we put a de uh, design together in order to strengthen all of these columns using the unidirectional that's running top to bottom along those balconies. And then basically that's the bidirectional holding that uh, as tie downs all the way up to the top of that column. And this basically saves having to, you know, rebuild these balconies. We can do this in place. It's a lot less invasive and we're providing all of the necessary structural capacity back to these columns on these balconies so that they can be, you know, safely support the, uh, the balconies. When it comes to Wrapping columns, this is another great application for carbon fiber where you can see there's some spalling here, there's some deteriorated deterioration in the column. We're gonna patch that and then the contractor is going to apply the, the bidirectional over, over this in this instance where we're going to be able to confine that entire column, put the capacity back into it. And it's a non-invasive repair that's going to reinstate all of the strength back to that column itself. This was a pre precast tilt-up repair that was uh, done in Colorado there where they were they had a precast elevator shaft and there was some clearance issues with this rebar. So this is rebar essentially had to be removed in order to make the clearances for the elevator shaft. And then the unidirectional was used to make up for that loss in the rebar. So it's a nice way to be able to um, have a very, very thin, ultra thin, surface profile that's going to be able to address some of these issues for construction errors that we see in the field. Another great benefit of carbon fiber is that it is, you know, it's a, it's a waterproof system once it's bonded with the carbon fiber. So this is the 24 inch bidirectional. You can see how it can, can contour to the swimming pool to reinforce these large structural cracks. And then it's going to reinforce it and waterproof them at the same time. This particular instance uh, was a deteriorated parking garage structure at uh, one of the tallest casinos in the world in Colorado there. And there was issues of deterioration in the underground there. So this is the 12, 24 inch uh, SRS 660 bi-directional providing complete confinement over that wall. So we're gonna strengthen it and also waterproof it at the same time. This particular foundation was poured with insufficient concrete strikes and would have to have been called out to be removed. It was on a remote island location and that just wasn't in the cards. And it was, they were going to face major construction delays if they had to tear this out. So the proposed solution was to wrap the entire foundation in the 24 inch bi-directional carbon fiber. And that put all the capacity back to the foundation so that they can safely build upon it and they're not gonna encounter any delays from the uh, insufficient concrete strengths that 
wouldn't have carried the load of the house sufficiently. There's been a lot of change of use of buildings and commercial buildings and structures. This particular instance, it was a vacuum factory that was being turned into a long-term care facility or a hospice, and they needed to add HVAC units to the roof of the structure. So adding that additional weight would require these beams to have to carry an additional load. So the unidirectional carbon fiber is being, was applied to the underside of these beams, and you can see it running one length running from one end of the beam to the other with some additional anchorage uh, at each end. But this enabled the roof structure to be able to, or the beam structure there to be able to carry all of those additional loads of those HVAC units on the roof. But this is a nice example of flexural strengthening with the SRS 600 unidirectional. The SRS 600 uni is also very, very conducive to wrapping and confining bridge pier structures. It, um, in this particular instance, there was a number of cracks in the pier caps here. And um, rather than have to rebuild these pier caps, the material was wrapped right around the entire bridge structure so that we confine it and uh, reinstate all of that capacity and load back to the bridge. This particular project was completed in about a week from start to finish. And uh, you can see this was a great result for the, the local community there in Jasper, Indiana, because the bridge didn't need to be decommissioned. There was no downtime, a very non-invasive, high strength repair that could be completed in, in a very short period of time. So this is a, a very nice instance of where we can put a, a lot of strength into a structure that would otherwise have a much more uh, costly repair that would have to be proposed to uh, to fix it. This was also coated in a elastomeric stucco to again prevent any kind of UV exposure to to the system, and it provides a nice concealed finish when it's complete. Any kind of damaged or P damaged or deteriorated PT cables that need to be repaired, this can also be repaired with carbon fiber, where we can pick up. Um, any of that load that's that's missing from a broken cable. SRS also carries crack stitches that are used for any kind of uh, surface, below surface uh, strengthening applications such as swimming pools here or stitching slabs back together again. They're very high strength carbon fiber Kevlar uh, composite and it's an open grid pattern that allows the carbon, the epoxy to be able to uh, disperse in between this grid and also bond very, very, uh, very have a very high, strong, strong uh, bond back into the, the concrete itself. So at Structural Reinforcement Solutions, we stock all of our inventory at uh, our facility in Ohio. All of the products that you saw in this presentation today are stocked at the 12 inch, 24 inch, six inches, whatever you need, we have it in stock, ready to go. And uh, typically those materials ship out same day or next day. Our team is there to help you. We are available. We answer our phones, emails. You let us know what you need and uh, we're there to support you. As far as engineering goes, we have a dedicated engineering team that is available to put designs together. If you're bidding on a project, we're able to facilitate that with either our in-house engineers or if we need uh, to liaise on that with your engineering team, we can do that. So if you need any kind of stamp designs, let us know. That's what we're here for. We also provide a lot of sales and installation training for your team to make sure that they're confident in their installation and you're able to actively speak and market to uh, these types of repairs that we highlighted today. So SRS, we are a resource to you guys and uh, we hope to be working with you soon. We are the leaders in uh, carbon fiber structural repairs. We hope to hear from you soon.